the parable of the wedding banquet Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 through 14 we start reading once more Jesus spoke to them in parables saying the kingdom of heaven may be compared to the king who gave a wedding banquet for his son he sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet but they would not come Again he sent others slaves, saying, Tell those who, who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest his his slaves mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but who in but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main street and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the, the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and garnishing of teeth. For many are called and few are chosen. The word of God. Well, happy Sunday. It is nice to see you. Thank you for joining me. I'm sitting here in my office over at Christie House front of a fire. You saw Brother Obed uh, read the gospel lesson today from the book of Matthew. He was out uh, by a river on a, a beautiful day. Brother Obed is from Uganda. He's a scholar studying here in the United States with his children. You may know some of them. Uh, so uh, thank, they may even be watching. I, good to see you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing your dad. We were off at a men's retreat yesterday. Anyway, we have a very interesting story in the gospel. It's, it's a little bit hard to understand. Uh, so I want to talk about it because it's about friendship, really. Like Obed's a friend of mine. And it's about how you are as a friend, how you show up as a friend. Do you have some friends? I bet you do. Um, what does it take to be a good friend? Well, it takes trust, it takes honesty, it takes asking a question. One question in particular, what can I do for you? And, and that's the question that a good friend always asks, what can I do for you? We had a bad friend in the story that Obed read today. There was a... They call him a king, and he was going to have a party. And he asked people uh, to come to his party. And no one came to his party. None of the people that he knew, none of his next door neighbors, none of the people from his church, none of the people from his school came to his party. And I wonder why they didn't come to his party. Well, because he maybe wasn't that good a friend. Maybe he was a bully. Maybe he was mean. Maybe he always asked them to do things for him, and he never asked the question, what can I do for you? So, can you say that with me? What can I do for you? Ask, ask your mom or dad, what can I do for you? Ask your, your sister or brother, if you have one, or your next door neighbor, what can I do for you? That's the question we always ask. But this king never asked that question. 
no, no, no. He was always about, do this for me. Come to my thing. Do this. And like, I, I don't want to go to that guy's party. That's not a very good party. So they stayed away. So then he went out and he found a lot of people who didn't know who he was. Right? They didn't know how he was. They didn't know his real character, his real nature. And he said, come to a party. And they're like, wow, he's a rich guy. He's got a big house. He's, he's got a lot of toys to play with and a lot of good food to eat. I'm going to go to his party. And so they go to the party. And they get to the party. It's a lot of fun because they're not really talking to this guy. They don't know anything about him. And, and they dress up and they come to the party and, and they have fun. And that's okay because maybe you'll learn how to be a better guy. Don't you think? That this king will be a better guy? Well, let's see. Because here's what happens. Somebody shows up and he's wearing the wrong clothes. And so the guy who is having the party goes up to him and says, uh, Brother, you're not wearing the, the, the wedding garment. And this guy freezes like he gets all scared. Have you ever gotten really scared? Like a teacher asks you a question or something. <laughs> And you know, you know the answer, but you freeze and you can't say anything. And your lips just sort of stick together and you panic, right? I think that's what happened to this guy. He didn't know. He didn't know what clothes to wear. He didn't know that this is uh, what he was supposed to do. And this bad friend did something that was hurtful. He kicked him out. In the book, they call it The Outer Darkness, right? But I want you to know something. I want you to know it and... Put it right here in the middle of your brain. Touch it. I want you to know that if you ever run into somebody who bullies you, if you ever run into somebody who makes you feel bad, if you ever run into somebody who, who says you're not wearing the right clothes, or you don't have the right tennis shoes on, or your haircut's not that cool, or you're too big or too small or too thin or too tall or too wide, and they cast you out of the group, and they make you feel bad and they, they kick you out of the party. I want you to know two things. Well, three things. Count them with me. Number one, you will not always be on the outside. That place where they talk about in the Bible, the outer darkness, it's an idea. And when you feel like you're in the outer darkness, know that you're not always going to feel that way. That feeling will go away. The second thing I want you to remember is that when you're out there and feeling that way, remember that God's with you. Remember God loves you. Remember God is there for you. So number one, you're not always going to be there. Number two, God's there with you. God knows you. God knows how you're feeling and God loves you. And number three, you always come here to the church. You will always have a place at this church. No matter how you feel, whether you're tall or small or wide or thin, whatever you are, however you are, you're welcome here because this is God's house. And God knows you and God loves you. So there was a bad king. People that knew him stayed away. Other people came just because he had a big house and he was rich. A guy came who didn't know what to say and this bully was mean to that person. Stay away from people who aren't kind. But if somebody does bully you and you feel like you're cast out, that's okay. Because it won't always feel that way. God is with you. And remember, you always have a place at this church. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining Obed in this service this morning. I miss seeing you in person. I can't wait till I see you at church. But till then, know that you're in my prayers. Know that I love you. And peace upon your soul. Hi everybody, welcome back to Craft Time. I'm Naomi, and today's gospel reading was from Matthew chapter 22, verses one through 14. And today's story was Jesus telling a parable about how the kingdom of heaven is like the king who sent out a bunch of wedding invitations, and some chose to come to the wedding party, and some people did not. So today, I thought we could make these cute little invitations. So I have a little envelope right here, and then there's an invitation inside that says, you're invited. So I'm gonna show you what you need. No surprise here, but we're gonna need some construction paper, some scissors, a marker 
or something to write with. And glue is optional. You don't actually need it, but if you want to use it, I'll show you where to use it on the craft. So if you have a square piece of paper already, then you're ahead of the game. But if you don't, and you just have a regular size construction piece of paper, um, the best way to get a perfect square is you're gonna take one side, I'm gonna hold it this way, you're gonna fold one side over like this to make a perfect triangle. So I'm gonna fold that and show you what that looks like. As so, okay, and you can see the point is perfectly matched there and then both sides of the paper are flush on this side. And then you're just gonna cut this bottom part off and save this bottom piece because you'll need it later. So I've already cut it, so there's my perfect square. And then there's the piece that I cut off from the bottom. So put that to the side. And um, here's your square. You're going to fold this in half. So if you, if you had to cut it out from um, a rectangle, then you already have it creased. So you're gonna fold it into a triangle like this. And then you're gonna take one of the flaps and fold it to the bottom there. So I'm gonna fold it and then I'll fold it up for you to see. As so, so just fold one of the flaps down to the bottom there. And then fold this other flap over it, but don't make it touch all the way to the bottom. So I'll fold it and I'll show you. You're gonna leave a little bit of space there, so don't fold it all the way to the bottom there, okay? Leave a little bit of space. And then we're gonna fold the sides to the middle. I'll show you once I fold it. So there's one side, so I just fold it. And fold it so that it matches right here, this top, this top fold, okay? And then we're gonna do the same to the other side. So there you go. And this is where the glue is optional. So if you lift up this flap, you'll see these two fold right here. You can actually open one side of the fold here and then slip this side in like that. So you just tuck it into that fold. And it should stay, but if you want to make it extra secure, you can just glue that down, that flap down, okay? And there is your cute little envelope. And the reason why I told you to save this part is that you can cut this in half, or if you wanna just leave it big and then fold it, that's fine. But we're gonna write, you're invited on this, and then we'll put it inside the envelope, okay? So I'll leave this one just the size that it is. Um, and the earlier one that I showed you, I did cut it in half, but totally up to you. And we will write, you are invited. You are invited. And if you need to pause it, so you can spell out the words, you can do so right now. And then we're just gonna fold that in half and slide it into our envelope. And you're gonna stick it behind this flap here. There you go. And you have a cute little envelope and the invitation inside that says you're invited. And I hope that when you see this envelope, you're reminded that God invites all of us to his kingdom, right? To be part of his kingdom. And all we have to do is say, yes, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna come with you to your kingdom. I hope you have fun making this craft and I'll see you next time.